it's not that the rasas they exist independent from each other no you have the madhuya rasa okay there cannot be vatsaya rasa has to be other way and separate everything no it is more like that all the rasas they nourish the madhuya rasa of radha and mohan so the sakyaras of the friends and the vatsaya rasa of yashoda they are also very important to express in the relation because of this the madhuya rasa the love between radha and mohan gets nourished for example in the sakas ha ah, krishna is their friend and this relation with his friends makes him the hero when they fight when they sport there's competition if krishna would be the only young beautiful boy in vrindavan then not difficult <laughs> to find out who is the best but there are so many gopas but only one is the most beautiful only one is the strongest the sweetest the naughtiest so the friendship between krishna and his friends also nourishing the madhuya rasa because krishna comes out of the best boy in whole vrindavan desirable for all the girls like in the school there were always there was this boy and all the girls they like this boy most because he was the best in the whole school <laughs> <laughs> and same to the vatsaya rasa also and ranga sunda so beautifully said that this is nara lila human like pastimes so we always we can see parallels also from our experiences in life like goranga sonda he explains so nice na no? mother don't want to know the detail <laughs> that is true mother is happy when the son is happy daughter is happy but detail no taste to listen that it's completely natural <laughs> and it's also natural that you always you stay the son of your mother <laughs> doesn't matter you are already 65 years old <laughs> yeah. because the relation is fixed it's the style of, <laughs> of being the son yeah so I just remember something, Gora Chandra. Yeah. Uh, when it was meeting of Rajavasis with Krishna in Kurukshetra, maybe devotees who read this lila can remember. All Rajavasis were meeting with Krishna, and they have been there. It was. mother father friends gopis radhika also it's a general lila and general explanation although behind this is the many other things but i just want to stay on that level and when they meet it was very interesting that meeting between krishna and gopis were in one mood 
But when he left, he met Yashoda. Gopis were not present there because it will ruin the mood of exchange the love between mother and son. Be what's happened? In the moment when Krishna uh, came in the room of Mother Yashoda, he started to behave like a small child. And can you imagine that some of his girls look this situation? There is no taste in that. They don't want to see their lover like a small child who is foolish, who is behaving completely whimsically, enjoying when mother is fondling him, sitting on the mother's lap. This is completely another rasa. And when Krishna was meeting Gopis and Radhika, he became completely another person. His behavior changed. His talking were changed. His feelings were changed. And he completely forgot about his mother. I remember Vishwan Chakra Thakur now is coming to me. Krishna jumped in the lap of Mother Yashoda and immediately she took his, her breast and put the nipple in his mouth. And it's happened in Kurukshetra, my dears. So this is the transcendental lilas, transcendental changing according to the bhavas, according to the person, according to the bhakta, because everything must be completely fitted together. So I just, you helped me to remember this. So in the same mood, Manjari Bhava is going and Radha is expressing her bhavas and so on and so on. So, because of this, when now we go back to the situation, Krishna is sitting there and eating. He cannot act. If he act in any direction, maybe he would destroy the rasa of whether Yashoda or Radharani. <laughs> maybe he can only sit and eat. No. Whether he act as a son in the relation with Yashoda, then Radharani, she don't want to see like a Gopa Yashoda relation. <laughs> but he also cannot act to Radharani in a romantic, loving, lover way. Then Yashoda is confused. <laughs> My Lala, what he is doing now? <laughs> so maybe. If they come together, Krishna almost he cannot do anything. He only can sit and eat. <laughs> to satisfy openly, publicly, the mood of her mother and father and elders. But secretly, he is trying to satisfy the mood of her, of his beloved. And Manjaris, they are seeing one thing, that in that moment, during this meal, when they all sitting together, Krishna and his friends, his sweetness is increasing. 
and they know his sweetness is increasing because my Rade is here. He is very sweet with his parents, but when Radhika appears, he is becoming more sweeter and sweeter and sweeter. In that complicated situation. Yes. That. We know that Radharani controls him. He is fixed in Radharani. That relation triggers more to him. Of course, he is fixed in Radharani, but he cannot act in front of Yashoda. But of course, his eyes, his body language, and the vibration in the room, <coughs> the intensity can be felt by the manjaris. What is going on inside of Radharani and inside of Krishna? So the manjaris, their, their desire for service is also increasing. The manjari only have the desire somehow they have to meet each other soon, as soon as possible, then <laughs> our service is coming. And then hidden kunja nearby Nandagram has a specific role to give them the short pleasure and again come back. <laughs> so this is the... And I'm like very it, thankful uh, to you. I'm very thankful to you that this, you, you chose this words because it's the morning past time. Morning past time. And the meditation, listening, talking about this morning pastimes is very, very helpful to clarify anarthas of the sadhakas. Materialistic conception of life, bodily concept of life, this meditation of this specific morning lila, Nishantya lila, is very, very helpful to purify the heart and prepare the heart for more intimate and intimate pastimes. Daddy. Jayananda, I want to add something or Radha Charan? Who is there? Also Suniti also there? Suniti there? I don't I see. Don't, I'm not sure. Yeah, Suniti is there. Okay, anyway. Yeah, Suniti is here. So I wanted to go, go back to what Jayananda said, that Parakya, this hidden secret love, almost nobody knows in Vrindavan. Even in Gaudiya Math, they don't talk about that. And then Iskon also not talking about that. But this is the gift of Mahaprabhu. He came for that. Manjari Bhav. Manjari Bhav only exists in the parakya. 
Without this parakia bath, the secret hidden love of Radha Mohan, the service of Manjaris is not required. So parakia and Manjari bath, they go, they go together. And Mahaprabhu came for Manjari Bhav to give that. Otherwise, why Rupa Goswami is coming? Why Rupa Manjari is coming? Why Tulsi Manjari is coming? Lama Manjari is coming? Why they are coming? <laughs> to give Svakiya? <laughs> for something. No, for that. So somehow, somebody has to speak about that. To open this. And I read, maybe, Jayananda already speak about Narayan Maharaj. He opened that in Gaudiya Mat, but he was like the only one. <laughs> and Anantadas Babaji, he also opened for Westerners by his translations. There are only three, Narayan Maharaj, Anantaras Bhavaji and Gurudev, who is speaking openly now about this. Ah, no, not only three, maybe some other also are there, sorry. But it's very rare. And yeah, you you got criticized for that to speak openly about Manjari Bhav. Like Jayananda said, no, and Gaudiya Mat, Narayan Maharaj. Some they criticize him. Maybe also not all Babaji's were happy that. Anantadas Baba giving the secrets in English language so openly. And maybe Gurudev also get criticism that he giving to us, share with us so openly about Manjari Bhar. So... But I think this is like, a, like always next level is coming. Like giving Srimad Bhagavatam to the world 5,000 years ago, showing the superior, superiority of Braja Lila, of Raga Bhakti, introducing that to some extent up to Saki Bhav, then appearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the Goswamis giving more details, but it was not coming all over the world. It was the secret of bhajan from sadhus in Vrindavan and Navadvip, Puri. Then Prabhupada bring it to the West and he also writing secretly but nobody could understand. But Gurudev explained to us the meanings 
of Prabhupada's purport deeply. And Prabhupada said to Narayan Maharaj, please, you have to help my disciples. Bring them one step further. So slowly, slowly, level by level, the next generation can reveal it a little more again. So I see like an evolution of revelation. And we are so fortunate that we, to us, all the secrets are open now. There's nothing more. Only now to realize. I also read that Narayan Maharaj, actually, he don't open this for the whole public of his thousands and thousands of disciples. Only he share also little privately to devotees, disciples, who he thought they, they are advanced and qualified to listen about Parakya. Shri Radhe. Maybe I can Maybe I this is a it's from Narayan Maharaj. May I want to read that. It's matching. Why is Parakya Rasa better than Swakya Rasa? Shri Guru Dev Narayan Maharaj explained the conception of the Goswami in regard to Parakya Rasa in detail to his close associates. So he only explained to his close associates, not in public, talking so much about Paraki. In Braja, many people accept the superiority of Svakya Rasa or the Vedic relation. Svakya means the conception that Radha and Krishna, they are married, and Krishna is married with all the gopis. In Braja, many people accept the superiority of Svakya Rasa, or the wedded relation between Krishna and his beloveds, the gopis, and especially Srimati Radhika. So in Vrindavan, the conception of the Brajpasis, if you ask them, almost everybody thinking Radha and Krishna, they are couple, official, they are husband and wife. In his classes, Srila Gurudev Narayan Maharaj, 
established the deep truths of Parakya Rasa and that Parakya Rasa is more exalted than Svakya Rasa. Some of his brahmacharis asked Gurudev, it seems that Srila Jiva Goswami established the prominence of Svakya Rasa. How can we understand this properly? Srila Gurudev responded, the conditioned souls have sinful desires and natures to protect them from committing immoral acts and thereby become more degraded. Jiva Goswami established Svakya Rasa, the wedded relation between Radha uh, between Krishna and his beloveds, for those unable to understand the transcendental paramore relations of Krishna with his eternal potencies. So Jiva Goswami writing, so to say, that's what Svakya that is the highest. But he did that because for us normal people, it is very difficult to understand that the highest thing is when Radharani is married and has a secret relation with Krishna because this is a rasa tattva it giving more spiritual flavor than when radha and krishna they are married but because radha rani is married and having a secret relationship with krishna in our world, this is supposed the immoral act. In our societies where you are living, it is not a good thing when a married wife has a lover. That would, if that happens again and again, it would destroy the whole society. So in normal life, in society, we need some rules and there is the wedding and there should be no cheating. If that happens, we degrade ourselves. And therefore, it is very difficult to accept for common people that Radha is married and Krishna is her lover secretly and that that is a beautiful thing. This is very difficult to accept for most of the people. So for them, Jiva Goswami saying, yes, Svakya, that is very good. That is the best thing. But secretly, he also say, <laughs> actually, for some who really understand, they can understand that parakya is a higher mood, but it's completely transcendental. All souls are part and parcel of Krishna, Gurudev said. 
He is the supreme proprietor, means owner. The souls, every jiva is his property. <laughs> like, for a soul to have an intimate relation with someone other than Krishna is against the soul's eternal nature and hence against eternal religion. Irreligion is when one being turns, ah, irreligion is when one being turns away from God and cultivates loving relations with others. So it means the jivas, the, the intrinsic nature is the jiva of the jiva is to have a loving relation with Krishna, not with someone else. And Krishna is the owner of every jiva. So our love is for him. And if we forget that, then we're going from love to the lust. It is said that the proper relation between jiva and jiva is friendship. Two jivas cannot be lovers. From the spirit on the spiritual platform, they cannot love and be loved, enjoy and enjoy it. That is not possible. That is not proper relation between jiva to jiva. So also in our material relation as husband and wife, the foundation always should be friendship to help each other. But the love of the soul is supposed to give happiness to Krishna. When one is in a loving relation with Bhagavan, then all other relations are wholesome. But if the soul, which is part and parcel of God, is separated from the whole, then relations with other souls are unnatural and the root of irreligion. If you love the Supreme Lord, you can subsequently have affection for everyone. So if you love God, you have, can have love for everyone. But if you don't have love for God, then what you call love for others is only lust, only selfish enjoyment, and it leads to uh, degradation. Having a paramour relation with another's spouse in this world is a sin. But in Braja Mandala, Krishna apparently dances with the wives of other cowherd men. How can this be reconciled? To increase the experience of loving mellows in the spiritual world, Yoga Maya arranges for Krishna's eternal beloveds to be the wives 
of other cowherds. Although those cowherds do not have a mentality of proprietor towards the gopis. For those who were qualified, Jiva Goswami established Parakya Rasa as the highest mellow of loving relation with Krishna. Srila Vishwana Chakravati Thakur strongly preached Parakya Rasa, as did Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Seeing the present state of society, Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur instructed his followers not to read the tenth canto, describing Krishna's pastimes with the gopis. He kept these esoteric topics confidential in the Gaudiya Mat, and general devotees did not sing rasa kirtans such as jaya radha madhava and yashomati nandan however bhakti siddhanta sanctioned the rasa kirtans for qualified sadhakas but why would the Goswamis and Guru Varga have composed transcendental literature and songs if not for their reading and recital? <laughs> so there we have it again. That is the what Mahaprabhu want to give that. And somehow, at one point, we have to sing the songs and read these books. Otherwise, the gift of Mahaprabhu cannot come to us. Vishwana Chakravati was preaching that. Bhaktivinoda Thakur was preaching that. Parakya is the highest. Bhakti Siddhanta and Gaudiya Math, he stopped that. Because he said, that is too high for the people in Gaudiya Mahat. Right. Yeah. So then it is said that different Achayas, they have a different role to play according to time and circumstances. On unqualified people who contemplate Radha Krishna's intimate pastimes make offenses. Considering the divine couple to be a mundane lover and beloved. When the sadhaka gains higher experience and his heart is cleared as an effect of advanced sadhu sangha, he could engage in hearing, chanting, and remembering Radha and Krishna's intimate pastimes. Gurudev came to give entrance into Braja Seva. He said, until the souls hear of Braja Rasa, they will have no means to progress. <laughs> Narayan Maharaj said, 
without listening about braja rasa nobody can make any progress meaning raga bhakti can help only vairi bhakti can never help Hmm. Okay, maybe. Someone want to share something or comment on that? <laughs> okay. Radhe Radhe Gaurachanna, very yeah. nice. Wow, Suniti. Where are you, Suniti? I cannot see you. <laughs> I'm hiding. <laughs> no, yeah, it's a very nice subject and, tea, and a deep subject. And it has to do with the mercy, how to receive from one's own teacher the in path of devotion it's interesting but i also like your first part how you de uh, describe the different relationships and also goranga sundar and jayananda maharaj how mother yashoda feels and how the gopis feel and how it is all there in rindavan and it's all existing at the same time i like this meditation because it's all for the pleasure of Radha and Mohan. And of course, we know that the whole of Rindavan is manifested from the heart of Srimati Radhika. So that Krishna can have all the different relationships to relish. And all the bridge Basis can also have the relationships that they were, how they want to serve him. So that was the first part, and then you come now to Parakya and Swakya. It seems a little bit technical, but as I feel also in my own uh, development in Bhakti, it is a very, very crucial uh, point to really come to that point that Parakya Bab or the relationship of Radha and Mohan when they are not married that this is our chance actually this is our chance as a soul by the mercy of Lord Chaitanya of Gauranga Mahaprabhu because this is how we can enter into the Leela because as Gurudev has often said when Radha and Krishna are married there is a part in the spiritual realms, in the kingdoms of the divine relationship, that is, that is a part that, where they are married. But as Gurudev always says, what, what help would they need when they are married? They have their home, they have their settled situation, they are the divine God and the divine goddess, and they are worshipped like that, but there's no reason why they would need anybody's support like they do need when in Vrindavan Leela, in Goloka Vrindavan, where they have the situation of a forbidden or hidden love. And to be honest, I also sometimes struggle with this point. It's not me that is struggling with the point, but my mind. And I know the difference. <laughs> the mind tries to understand, but me as a, as a, you know, as a Darcy, as a maidservant, is so happy and so lucky. And so this development, what you're giving now all the Shastras and all the teachers, and I think why they not speak about it? Because it's, 
actually only manjaris who have a little bit of taste for their service and who have a lot of surrender i think they can then something is able to understand but i don't know if it's really to be understood because words are so limited but Gurudev always makes this beautiful point that I relish when he says, they need us there. They cannot meet. They have this hidden, you know, hidden relationship. And they always have to endeavor to meet, endeavor to exchange. And they ha always have these risky situations. Like you were telling even this super risky situation super tense it's situation when they are together with all the elders mother yashoda and Mo mother ruhini and and all the elders are there nanda baba and they are preparing and they are you know can you imagine this happens every day every morning <laughs> so it's quite a mind-blowing mind-blowing uh thing that's happening in rindavan every day these intense emotions. And when my mind is struggling with this, I just share now something from my, my uh, open heart, so to say, then I have always one trick, how I can go back to the, you know, more deeper understanding, then I always say it's about the Supreme God and the Supreme Goddess and it's not about my understanding, you know, it's their own uh, privacy, it's their own uh, relish. And they, and Gauranga Mahaprabhu is, is more Shimati Radhika's mood, and she comes to make it possible for the jivas, who we are now here in this Kali Yuga, to invite us in this Rama, Rama, Hare, Hare. In this eternal, you know, sweet ecstasy of trying to make them meet. Because in a way, they, they are not two even. They are one. Radha and Krishna are one. They are not two even. I have the proof. I don't know the verse from Radha Rasudanidi, but there's one very nice uh, quote of Baba where he says, uh, in the in the commentary from another book, I forgot. Even who thinks that that she is a girl or she is one, and I one who thinks that they are deluded. But the divine couple, who are one but at the same different, they are coming and playing their most intense lila, and they are inviting us. And I find this always helpful. Then I always feel, yeah, it's a super chance, you know. You should hurry up and realize your kinkari swaru. Don't delay. Don't doubt. Don't be foolish in trying to understand with material consciousness. And then I always feel, oh, yeah, my dear Shimati Radhika, my dear Guru Devi, I cannot understand. I'm a fool. You know, I have a material consciousness. Still I have. But please help me and overload me with your mercy and overload me with your good association of devotees who have realized that. Because I think the gurus who have taught it or who are teaching it now why are they so rare? Because they are also going through a fire. And we have seen it. How, how much have they, have they criticized Narayan Maharaj? How much? No? And our Gurudev, how much have they criticized them? And maybe still are. And how much are we criticized you know, for saying, we oh, yeah, are the kingaries and it's our, you know, it's our stand. We are not hiding it anymore. We, we are luckily, happily accepting it and we are trying to move forward with it. So thank you, Gora Chandra, for bringing up this topic.
it's sometimes a little bit i think it's sometimes a little bit um uh, you know a topic that is diff difficult to understand from the material point of view but from the spiritual point of view it is a must because we cannot jump into being a dasi without knowing you know what are the misconceptions these misconceptions or misunderstandings they are important and they are also important to to know and once i ask who do well, how is it that now in kali yuga we get the highest blessings you know because it seems all the other souls in other in other times they were more qualified and we can also see that when jiva goswami even was writing a book to to you know to somehow justify or to somehow make the wedded relationship be between radha and mohan look very you know interesting and very right we can understand that at these times the moral codes were so high and the varnashram dharma understanding and the vaidhi understanding was prominent but good is that now in this in this kali yuga and coming also now into the times where shimati radhika's glories are now you know becoming more eminent we are not talking so much anymore about the supreme personality of god had now it's about the supreme personality of goddess of our shrimati radhika and he says that this is her own grace that we are so fallen now that actually we have no other chance but her mercy and he says in kali yuga everything is going up and down and criss and cross everything is so mixed up no nobody has any more this completely deep rooted understanding of morally morality and this and that that's why goranga mahaprabhu came to save these souls who are now ready to you know be so bold and say i am radharani's servant i want to become radharani's servant Thank you Gora Chandraji I really like the way how you speaking and how you expressing I was hiding because I was here in the kitchen and then sometimes I just want to listen because I really love to listen to all of you But uh, excuse me I just want to share a little bit so you don't feel I'm I'm not loving you or something <laughs> Oh thank you very nice Yeah. Sometimes it comes up. I really choose by finger, no? And then I'm reading sixty-four. Parakia came, and then I read something about Parakia. And yeah, as you said, sometimes it's good to discuss that because it's just. it's ve it's very important as you said in this world we are living in when they are writing that like bhakti vinod thakur bhakti siddhanta like it was more than 100 years ago imagine what kind of society it was in india still today very more rules of morality you cannot just go with the boy you like and here and there and do like this it's not possible even today see all the muslim countries what is going on there no and then you want to explain that god he has a relation with a married woman how difficult is that to understand in today's societies still so but somehow we are in the position that we discuss this subject and also bring this conceptions into the world 
we are also part of that to explain about rasa tattva. So, I don't know why Gurudev sharing this with us, but it is our job to be the parrot of Gurudev. <laughs> As a disciple, I will speak what my Gurudev was teaching me. And he teach this to me, so I will share this way. So then this comes into the world, and of course, it's difficult to understand for most of the people, but it has to be teached somehow, because <laughs> this is the desire of Mahaprabhu. He want to give that to everyone. So, the Acharyas, they also face the difficulties. Even Jiva Goswami, he must write, yes, yes, Swakia is the best <laughs> to console the society. No? The more, the people who are living in Vaidhi and in, in the moral conceptions of God. So, even the appearance of Mahaprabhu, we know by Prabhupada explaining Pancha Tattva and Nitai Goranga, slowly we accept that Mahaprabhu is the incarnation of God in Kali Yuga. But how the people 500 years ago, they could accept that. There was a sannyasi, he was always crying and jumping and Krishna, Krishna with tears in his eyes. And then his followers, they, they start teaching, this is God himself. This Mahaprabhu is God himself. It's a combined form of Radha and Krishna. Really, the people thought the Vaishnavas, followers of Mahaprabhu, they are all crazy. Narayan is God, <laughs> Krishna is God, but this sannyasi, who is only dancing and crying, and how difficult was that to accept? And it has to be put on the foundation of Shastra. And that was a difficult job for the Goswamis to establish that truth by Shastra. Otherwise, nobody could believe that. But we have all that predictions from the Bhagavatam about the incarnation in Kali Yuga. So, and we know the secrets from Chaitanya Charitamrita and everything. So, but outside of Gaudiya Vaishnava, <laughs> nobody accepted Mahaprabhu as the incarnation of God in Kali Yuga. <laughs> we are very on the edge, no? <laughs> with this movement somehow. So sometimes we can talk about that also. I like it a little. <laughs> it's like a revolution in the consciousness of mankind, this conception of love, conception of rasa. Nobody talked about rasa before. Wow, Mahaprabhu just came 500 years ago. Jai Radhe, you just remember me one time someone, I don't know who, asked Mahaprabhu directly why you openly gave this kind of bhava, parakya bhava, for such kind of 
completely unqualified and sinful person since Kali Yuga? And the answer was of Mahaprabhu, because they are only qualified for this kind of love, because they are so sinful, they cannot follow any rules and regulations and dharmas, and they are completely qualified only for this paraki above. And if we are going deeply in our hearts, we can see and feel how this kind of feeling is deeply, deeply rooted in the form of Kama, but by listening the pure Kata, pure Rasa, this form of Kama will slowly and slowly purify so that we don't have problems with the mind, ego, intelligence, bodily concepts of life, and just understand that we are spiritual soul, and like Gora Chandra said, and our only position is to be in love relationship with that. And why it's also happening? Because golden avatar, incarnation, Gora Chandra said, for this age opened this path. He didn't open other paths. So it means that we can be very confidential, very secure, that this is the proper part, path, although it sounds completely crazy. But Mahaprabhu opened that path, gave instructions how to follow this. He gave his associate who mercifully explaining that path, so it must be that it's completely bona fide path, although I am completely useless. And this path actually is hidden because the jivas in the previous ages were not qualified for this path. Although it sounds crazy also. They have been so qualified so many for so many things. Like Guru Devi say, they practice sadhana so many years very strictly, really, really strictly. This kind of sadhana, this kind of bhajana is funny, actually. This is not bhajana, this is not sadhana at all. And this is the reason why our acharyas is, is saying that only way to attain this goal, which is here, which is offered to us, is only Kripa. For the fools like me, for the lusty people like me, for the sinful people like me, this is the only solution. Kripa. And Goranga also, with his own words, confirmed this. How to practice this path? like a married woman <laughs> who is always thinking <laughs> on her beloved. She is doing so perfectly, fulfilling all her dharmic duties. But in the heart, she is thinking about her lover, when I will meet her, when I give him a brace, kiss, and so on and so on in other details. So Mahaprabhu, with his own words, used this materialistic example, because we are, I am a materialistic person. And I understand only this kind of language. But we need to listen all these things through the mouth of pure Rasik devotees and be guided through them. In that way, we will receive sufficient sukritis for this particular bhav. Gorachandra very nicely explained in the beginning this Parakya Swakya, reading beautiful explanations of Nara Maharaj. Because many people, they don't have sukritis for Parakya bhav. They have only sukritis for different other bhavs. And we desperately need associations, sadhu sangha, 
in the mood of Manjari Bhav to receive more and more and more and more Sukritis. So this opportunity to listen, to read these two wonderful books, Vilapa Kusumanjali Radharasa Sudhanidhi is giving us opportunity to serve the words of, Mah of Mahajanas. And by serving, we are receiving their emotions. And in that way, their emotions are carving on our hearts, bringing deep impressions. So suddenly, fool like me say, oh, this Barakya Baba, oh, this is completely normal. This Manjari Baba, yeah, this is only only way for me. But this is not possible without Sukritis, who someone gave to me. I don't have it. <laughs> So this is the reason why we need close, loving, full of Shraddha, full of faith, association of such kind of very rare persons. And this is the gift, as I see, of Mahaprabhu, who said, it's okay, okay, Varnasha Madharma, it's all right. This Baal, Shantya Rasa, it's okay. Dasya Rasa, it's okay. Next, 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 next. Now, when you are talking about this confidential pastimes between Radha and Krishna, my heart is happy. When Goranga's heart is happy, it means that we are allowed to feel his happiness. Kali Yuga, Jivas, amazing. But he said, they are only qualified for this. <laughs> what to do? The, everyone is criticizing also in Vrindavan. Everyone is criticizing Radhika. So I'm happily accepting this criticism <laughs> because everyone is criticizing Radhika. Very suspicious. Yeah, we know that she is hiddenly <laughs> is meeting with this boy, and she is very, uh, she is married. But this is Parakyaba, and this is Nara Lila. We cannot understand other Lilas. Only way, only Lilas which can really feel understand, have some connection, is this Nara Lila. Full of risk, like Sunitiji said, full of risk. And Prabhupada glorifying Parakya Bhava by saying, this Parakya Bhava is full of risk, and because of that is so sweet. <laughs> but there is no place for the mind, bodily consciousness, intelligence, to understand it, and we can understand only by deep Sukritis, Gada, Guru, on, it's completely, I cannot pronounce, and no one, I think, from Western countries, we, we, uh, when we pr pronounce the name of this Sukriti, it's completely uh, wrong meanings. Gopinath, he knows that. And Gurudev knows how to pronounce this Gadra, Gadra, I don't know. Because this Gadra, it means death, it means sickness, it means so many things. But when Gurudev is pronouncing and Gopinath, they are pronouncing, then it's a proper Sukriti for attaining Manjari Bhav and serving Radhika in the Parakya mood. That is it. So nice. Gurudev always say, I'm not qualified, this is my qualification. <laughs> no qualification is our qualification. And it's not a joke, as Goranga Sunda said. And that reminds me also of one realization that Gopinath 
recently he shared that he thought actually it's more easy that the kami <laughs> becomes a devotee than the jnani because kami has the enjoying tendency like we all have that everybody want to enjoy <laughs> so we are so fallen we have no knowledge our you no know, western society is ah oh, my god cheating my wife <laughs> cheating my husband no problem no moral standards anymore so in that condition <laughs> only <laughs> parakia can help can bring us out because we understand enjoying tendencies every one of us understand only to change from the material to the spiritual and we are, we are fortunate that we are not so highly educated that we are not like uh, believe that we can do alone by the strength of my sadhana so like in other yugas they are so pure control the mind control the senses meditate thousands of years but no sukriti for <laughs> parakia because it's immoral it's out of van ashram dharma cannot accept that so but we in kali yuga we can accept everything <laughs> they are over qualified <laughs> <laughs> yes because when you approach for some job they need some qualifications but if you are over qualified it's like you are not a qualified they will say thank you very much you are uh, over qualified yes. we cannot accept you we need someone who is less qualified than you you so are not fallen enough so mercy yeah. of Mahaprabhu not coming <laughs> yes then translate this <laughs> so to be over qualified it means that you have to live in other ages you know in other yugas but in kali yugas welcome to the club you know <laughs> jai ho, jai ho. <laughs> so there is nothing to be proud actually here and this is very good like gopina said i cannot be yogi i cannot be gyani only thing which is my real position is a karmi mm. and that language i understand mm. but we should always understand that it's not bodily concepts of life it's yes. just the pr basic <clears throat> things which can help us or make a blockage for this because if we are too much dharmic also it's over qualification <laughs> yeah. because in vraja rajavasis are lying they are stealing they are speaking one thing doing second thing and thinking third thing this is raj mood there is no dharma <laughs> sorry this is real raj mood not what we think that is a raj mood <laughs> i learned that from gurudev and rajavasis examples <laughs> I'm trying to accept it. So for that reason, we need the time. We need the time to digest like a cows. They are eating, eating, they are not swallowing. They are eating, eating, eating. Then, then stop, lay down and digest, digest, digest. And then starting slowly, slowly to go in their belly 
in their stomach to eat. But the main process in the mouth of cow is to eat, but to digest. Proper eating and proper digestion. It requires time, patience, humbleness, determination, enthusiasm. So, I love you so much. The Gaudiya Chayas proclaim that Parakiyaras is the highest form of love. Jaya Jaya Uchvala Rasa Sava Rasa Sa Parakiya Bhava Jaha Brajate Pracha. All glories, all glories to divine armor, supreme among all Rasas. <laughs> Jai. Parakiya Bhav is the essence of Srimad Bhagavatam and is the esoteric conception for what Chai Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came. Jai Jai Shri Radeh.